Hello everyone, this is Anik Marie. Welcome to this video. In today's video, I will be discussing how to save tax in South Africa using the turnover tax system. This will be the first video or content video that I will be sharing on my channel. I would just like to thank everyone that has liked my channel thus far. Um, I do appreciate your continued support. Thank you very much. Let's get into it. So how do you save tax in South Africa? under the turnover tax or the micro business system. For turnover tax, it is a simplified tax system that is aimed at micro businesses in order to meet their tax obligations. What are the benefits of turnover tax and why should you consider turnover tax? So for turnover tax, it has lower tax rates and it replaces income tax, VAT, provisional tax, capital gains, and dividends tax. For who is micro businesses? It's for businesses with a qualifying turnover of less than 1 million rand. I've included the turnover tax table for the 2022 year of assessment and you will see that on the first 335,000 rand turnover there is zero tax payable. In the highest scale if you earn um, qualifying turnover of more than 750,000 Rand, you will pay 6,650 Rand plus the 3% of the amount above 750,000 Rand. Okay. I've made a comparison between turnover and standard tax just to put it into perspective um, and to understand the tax system a bit better. So let's compare them. For the first one, I asked what is being taxed. So for turnover tax, we are looking at the qualifying turnover. That will be your turnover or your top line or your income. For individuals and for private companies, we are looking at taxable income. So what is taxable income? That your income less your expenses and adjusted for tax that gives you your taxable income on which the tax is calculated. So what tax rates apply for the three categories? For turnover tax, we look at the turnover tax table, which is this table. For individuals that trade in their own names, we look at the individual's marginal rate of income tax. This is the individual's marginal rate of income tax. So it starts in 18% and it goes up to 45% for individuals that earn one6 that earn more than 1.65 million rand in a year of assessment. Okay, for private companies, a private company pays tax at 28% on their taxable income and we have received confirmation that this rate will be de decreased to 27% from the 1st of April 2022. Now we're going to look at a simple example to compare the three systems. So for if income of hundred of 750,000 Rand is taken with a profit margin of 20%. So what is a profit margin? It's your profit over your income that provides you with 20%. So to put numbers to it, if your income is 750,000 Rand, your profit will be 150,000 Rand and your expenses will be 600,000 Rand. So now let's compare the tax that you will pay under the turnover tax system when compared to the individual and a private company. So under the turnover tax system, on 750,000 Rand turnover, you will pay total tax of 6,650 Rand in a year of assessment. For an individual, the tax on the same income and with a profit margin of 20% will be 11,286 Rand. So we can see when we compare the individual tax rates to the turnover tax system that you will pay as an individual 4,636 Rand more tax than you would have paid if you were registered under the turnover tax. A private company on a profit of 150,000 Rand will pay tax at 28% and that amounts to 42,000 Rand. So if you compare the tax of a private company to the turnover tax system, for the same um, example, 
the private company would pay 35,000 Rand, 355,000 and 350 Rand more than he would have under the turnover tax system. So under the standard tax system, individuals and special trusts will pay tax according to these marginal scales. Trusts themselves pay tax at the highest um, tax rate possible, that is 45%, and companies and CCs, closed corporations, pay tax at a flat rate of 28%. So who is this turnover tax for? Turnover tax is for individuals, partnerships, closed corporations, companies and cooperatives that have a qualifying turnover of less than 1 million rand. If you are interested in the turnover tax system and you want to see if you meet the requirements, you will do the turnover tax test. Let's look at the turnover tax quest, uh, a test and what is required. So there is a, a number of questions that you will have to answer yes. If you answer a question yes, you can proceed to the next question. If you answer a question with a no, that means you will unfortunately not qualify for the turnover tax system. So the first question is, will the qualifying turnover of the business be less than or equal to 1 million Rand for the year of assessment? The year of assessment is from March of one year up until February of the next year and your qualifying turnover will need to be less than 1 million Rand to qualify for turnover tax. You must also declare that your business is not a personal services provider or a labor broker without a SARS exemption certificate. So in short, what is a personal services provider? It is, for example, if I work for a company and I am an employee of a company, um, I will receive a pay slip and I will receive remuneration and pay as you earn will be deducted. A personal services provider will be when I register a private company in South Africa and then I go to my employer and say to my employer you're not going to pay me a salary and deduct pay as you earn but my private company is going to invoice you um, for the service I've rendered. So it's basically when you interject a private company or an entity between yourself and your employer that entity of yours will be seen as a personal services provider. So does it trade in, does the business trade in one of the following forms? So it has to be a sole prop, a, a partnership, a close corporation or a company. The next question is, is the business a partnership and were all the partners individuals during the year of assessment? So if this business you want to register as a turnover tax, it, is a partnership, then all the partners in this partnership have to be individuals, it can't be trust, companies, etc. Then also for a private company, if you register a private company, all the shareholders will have to be natural persons or individuals. So for example, your private company can't be owned by your family trust, it can't be owned by your holding company, all the shareholders of your company have to be individuals to qualify for the turnover tax system. The next question is, do you declare that the business is not a public benefit organization, a recreational club, a association of persons or a small business funding entity? So from this, we can see that public benefit organizations or sports clubs will not qualify for the turnover tax system. And then also, does your entity have a year of assessment that ends on the last day of February? Normally, entities and individuals will have a year end of February, but some companies and trusts may register for alternative years of assessment like April, May, etc. Do you declare that the owner or the partner, the shareholders or the members do not hold shares or interest in any other closed corporation company other than the following. So what this question asks is the shareholders that hold shares in your private company that you want to register for turnover tax. 
do those shareholders hold any other interest in under in other companies so say there's there's one shareholder that's whole, that hold shares in three different private companies then one of these companies that he wants to register for turnover tax will not be allowed it may only be one company in which the shareholders are all natural persons there are however a few exceptions so you are still allowed to hold listed South Af shares in listed South African companies. This will be, for example, if you have a share portfolio with Allen Gray, Old Mutual, Liberty, all those listed companies in South Africa. You can also hold, still hold shares in collective investment schemes, body, body corporates, venture capital companies, and then also friendly societies. You can also still hold shares in a dormant company where the assets are not more than 5,000 Rand in the year of assessment. Okay, and then also any company that has taken steps to liquidate, wind up and deregister. So if you are a natural person and you've answered yes to the, to the questions we just discussed above, you must also not be rendering a professional service where more of 20% of your total income consists of either professional service or investment income. So professional services usually refers to um, people that provide a professional service that will be, for example, accountants, attorneys, um, and other professional consulting services. Investment income will refer to interest, dividends, and also rental income from long-term rentals. So say you have a tenant for a year or two. So if you receive more than 20% of your income from this professional services, or you receive more than 20% of your income from investment income, then you would unfortunately not qualify for the turnover tax system. Then SARS also asked if you have disposed of any assets that exceed 1.5 million rand over the past year of assessment and the past two years of ass assessment then you may also disqualify for turnover tax and you may also not have been registered for turnover tax previously to be able to qualify for registration now so we look we've looked at the questions um, and we looked at what may disqualify you I now want to provide you with some examples of micro businesses that may qualify for the turnover tax system and these these businesses will typically not be regarded as professional services and I've put them into three categories here so the first will be for retail sales of tangible products to customers so that will be small restaurants food outlets livestock traders small-scale farmers, hawkers, and similar activities. Also, people that are involved in the repairing, installation, alter, altering, de decorating, cleaning, construction, or improving the movable, immovable, or personal property of customers. So, examples here are plumbers, electricians, other artisans, carpentry, car washing, panel beaters, landscape maintenance, laundromat, shoe repairers. And then also the third category will be the provision of services of a personal and a social nature to the public. Examples are payphone operators, hairdressers, daycare centers, creches, bed and breakfasts, guest houses, taxi drivers, herbalists, traditional healers. So for bed and breakfast and for guest houses, we see that they are short-term accommodation. So if you run a guest house or if you run a lodge or if you run a bed and breakfast, the people come and go, it's short-term rental. SARS says that short-term accommodation is not rental in respect of immovable property and therefore not investment income. And from the previous slide, you may remember that more, not more than 20% of our income may consist of investment income. If you run a bed and breakfast, if you run a guest house, that will not qualify for investment income and you will still be in the boat to try and register for turnover tax. 
So now you have met the criteria, then how do you go about to register for turnover tax? The first thing is you will fill in the application form. You can either fill in a manual form, you can write in the details or you can complete it online. It's an online form that you can fill in and type in. Once you've filled in the form, you can then print out that form, sign it and you can request an appointment at a local SARS branch to attend the appointment. Um, with the COVID and so on, they afford video appointments or telephonic appointments. And then you can also alternatively post a return to the SARS processing center. Their um, postal box is PO Box 436 Pretoria number one. So how do you know that your application was successful? If your application was successful, SARS will send you an outcome letter in the form of a registration certificate and notify you that it has been successful. If there is any issues with your application, they will also let you know and then you can just reapply. So when do you register? You are required to register before the beginning of a year of assessment. So if you want to be registered for turnover tax from March until Feb, you have to apply for that registration before the 1st of March. There is, however, special timing for new businesses. Say you only opened up a new business and started trading in May month. SARS then allows you two months from the date you started trading to register for turnover tax. So in the example, you started trading in May, you have until the end of July to register for turnover tax. For existing businesses that only now hear about turnover tax, um, they can apply for registration, but they will only be registered from the next year of assessment. How does the deregistration work? So we spoke about how to register. Now we're going to talk about how to deregister. So that will mean you will no longer be under the turnover tax system. So there is voluntary deregistration where you can say to SARS, um, I elect to no longer be registered for turnover tax. And to make that effective, I have to let them know before the beginning of a year of assessment. And then it will be, be then it will be effective from the beginning of that year of assessment. So, for example, I have to let them know before the 1st of March for a year. So I have to let them know in February or January before that March that I don't wish to be under the turnover tax system for the coming year of assessment. Then also, because there is special requirements for turnover tax, if my qualifying turnover is more than 1 million rand in a year of assessment, I will no longer qualify for turnover tax. And then I will be deregistered from the month following where I no longer qualify for turnover tax. You can also be deregistered for turnover tax if you no longer meet all the requirements. An example of this will be if your shareholding changes or if you start receiving professional services of more than 20% or investment income. When you are registered for turnover tax, you have to keep a tab on these requirements to stay registered. Once you have deregistered for turnover tax, SARS will not allow you to um, register again in a year or two, five, ten years. Once you're deregistered, it's done. Now you're registered, so how do you go about submitting a tax return for turnover tax? You can complete your turnover tax submission form and send it to the SARS processing center by post. The postal address is PO Box 436 Pretoria number one. How do I then go about paying for turnover tax? So there's still tax payable on profitable businesses. This the payments will consist of three payments that are required for a year of assessment. Your first payment is due in August of a year. So your year of assessment will run from March until February. Your first payment is due in the August after the March. So your first payment will you, you will work out your annual tax liability and you will have to pay half of your annual tax in August. Then in the February following the August you will have to make your second payment. So you will calculate your annual tax liability, deduct what you already paid in August and then have to pay the difference in February. 
your final payment will have to be done when you submit your annual tax return for turnover tax. So if your payments for the first and the second um, payment period was insufficient, you will have to make a final payment when you submit your tax return. So when can you submit your tax return? The tax season typically opens the 1st of July and it runs until the 31st of January. So you have until the 31st of January to submit your turnover tax um, tax return and the 31st of January will typically be 11 months after your year of assessment has closed. What records must be kept for turnover tax? So turnover tax has a big advantage that um, it has reduced admin requirements and it eliminates the need for detailed book bookkeeping. Turnover tax also has significantly lower tax rates as we saw with the example and the records that you are required to keep is records of all amounts received so that will be your invoices or amounts you received in your bank statements also all your dividends declared or your dividend income received you will also need to compile an asset register for all assets uh, with a cost price of more than 10,000 Rand. So this will be per asset, per asset that's more than 10,000 Rand in a year of assessment, as well as a register for your liabilities and also just liabilities that are more than 10,000 Rand at the end of a year of assessment. So this will be per liability. So say you have a credit card of more than 10,000 Rand, that will have to be on your register. If you owe a supplier more than 10,000 Rand, that will have to be in your register at the end of the year of assessment. If you want more information, um, I shared a link here in the slides for the SARS guide. The information I provided today um, is an overall view at the turnover tax system. Um, it's, to, it's to bring this tax system under um, your eye so that you know about it, that you can share with your friends and family um, and small business owners that you may know. And if you want to request a copy of the slideshow, you are welcome to send me a mail to andrich.mare at gmail.com. I will send you a copy of, of the slideshow. And it's important to remember if you looked at the slideshow and you are interested in turnover tax, I can definitely advise you to go and, to go and speak to your local tax advisor. From my side, I only provide information on this tax system. If you are interested, go and speak to your local tax advisor on turnover tax. Um, appoint a bookkeeper, appoint a local tax practitioner that will assist you with registering um, and submitting your turnover tax returns annually. Um, and then you will know you will meet your tax obligations. Lastly, from my side, I would just like to thank you for watching this presentation. I trust that you have found the information in this presentation useful. Um, and if you did, will you please subscribe to this channel and share the video with your friends and local business owners. This video was created to help local business owners um, to meet their tax obligations and to also pay less tax and, and save some money on tax because this is preferential tax rates that SARS has provided for the small medium enterprises in South Africa. Um, and I definitely think that we need to make use of that. You, you are free to go and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I shared the link in the slides as well as follow me on LinkedIn. Thank you very much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.